good morning and uh, again welcome to peace through the word uh, coming to you from peace in the valley lutheran church uh, virtually in oro valley arizona on wednesday the 27th of may uh, midweek on the last week in may my goodness the time is sir sure flying away amen so slow down mr time right Trusting that you had a wonderful, restful uh, evening and you're ready for another day of God's grace and mercies. And uh, also trusting that you will find the peace that you need through Peace Through the Word ministry. And uh, it is sincerely a blessing uh, to bring this ministry to you as it continues to be. Uh, I'm going to just take a little time this morning and uh, just kind of introduce you a little bit to some things around here. Uh, you know, we, we gather together uh, every day, and uh, uh, here in my uh, study here in my residence up in Oro Valley, Arizona, uh, you're seeing some things and behind me. And one of the things you're seeing uh, is the crucifix that I have, and the other is a red, white, and blue flag. Uh, that flag is the flag of the country uh, of the Dominican Republic. And I do a lot of ministry down there uh, with and through the Dominican Republic Lutheran Mission and Seminary. And that uh, uh, mission and seminary uh, trains all of our pastors, uh, not only for the Dominican Republic, but all of Central America. Including uh, Honduras and Guatemala and Belize and El Salvador and uh, Costa Rica and all over, but also in South America and also uh, in Europe and Spain. Um, and uh, we're also trying to reach out into uh, the Philippines in Asia as well. Uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous piece of ministry. So uh, I've attached myself to them uh, to. Uh, uh, do mission work, uh, assist them in mission work uh, in any way that we can. Um, and so uh, I have that flag. Now, I'm going to move over here a little bit. That flag is kind of neat because in the center of that flag um, is an open Bible. And uh, the Dominican Republic has a lot of history behind it. I didn't realize that there was an open Bible there on their flag until that was brought to my attention. But I find that interesting. Uh, but a lot of history uh, about the Dominican Republic. Uh, there is, um, I don't know if it's true or not, but it, it's believed that uh, the remains of Christopher Columbus is in the Dominican and so on and so forth. So anyway, and then on the other side is my crucifix. And uh, I have that there for a reason because uh, it's a physical reminder of just how much God loves me. And I want to tell you a little bit of story about the crucifix for me. Um, when I was just a real small boy uh, living in Alpena, Michigan, uh, I was blessed to have Christian parents for a short period of time. And I remember as a very small boy, uh, I walked into the Roman Catholic Cemetery uh, in Alpena and I went into the back of that cemetery and uh, in that cemetery even to this day is a very large realistic crucifix it's, it's, it's very realistic uh, at least it was for me and as a small boy I went to back there and stood at the foot of that and just looked up and man I mean it is a transformational experience for me. It basically formulated for what I'm doing today. And so that is a constant reminder for me as to how much God and Jesus Christ loves me. Uh, I pray that maybe uh, it might be the same for you or whatever, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's meaningful. So that's why I have them. I, I, I like to have those physical reminders. So anyway, this morning, brothers and sisters, we're going to be looking uh, at the subject that Dr. Martin Luther will unpack for us 
on waiting for the Lord. And uh, I don't know if you're a patient person or not, but I'm not. And the people that know me intimately know that to be a fact. I am not a patient person. My patience only goes so far, and it's a very short fuse, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm a results-oriented guy. Uh, I will get results uh, one way or the other. And um, so, uh, so when, we, when, when we have to wait uh, on the Lord, uh, that's difficult for me. And maybe the same holds true for you. I don't know. But my prayer is that we will all find genuine peace this morning as we look at this subject, uh, waiting for the Lord, through the readings and through Martin Luther's uh, unpacking it for us. So I pray that uh, the blessings are in store for us. So brothers and sisters, we come together this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver us. Make haste to help us, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, the very first reading I want to share with you uh, comes from Peter. Eh, you got to love this guy, you know. This is in 2 Peter uh, chapter 3. I'm going to read a few verses, and I'm going to start in verse 8. Uh, you know, Peter was an interesting fella. You know, he really was. He was very Jewish, uh, but then he had this encounter with Jesus, and that changed some of the, you know, changed his uh, persona tremendously. Uh, and he had uh, quite the the uh, discussions with Jesus, okay? But listen to what he says here in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. He's talking in this chapter, he's talking about the day of the Lord, when Jesus comes back again, the second coming of Christ. Brothers and sisters, I, 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 I really believe, I really believe that it is very, very, very near. As I look around at current events and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I really believe it's very near, all right? And so this is the subject that uh, as St. Peter is talking about. And so he, he says this, he goes, uh, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So he's talking about delay. Uh, when we don't see things happening, we tend to come to the conclusion that it's not going to happen, and we give up, or we do something else, or whatever. And, and that, this carries over into our Christian life, okay? So he's talking about that. Uh, he, he's talking about, okay, the day of the Lord hasn't come. And, and people have told me, oh, Ron, people have been saying that for eons, you know, you're talking about current events. The same current events happened years ago, the same thing, nothing happened. And so there's this uh, slacking, if you will, of maybe pushing that off <clears throat> and not being diligent as we wait for the Lord, okay? So that's kind of what's being capsulized here. So he says, do not overlook the fact that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years to us, and a thousand years is one day, okay? We don't have a right concept of time as God does. Okay? It's different. <laughs> okay? So then he goes, The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness. And this, tr th this carries over to our prayer life. Sometimes we'll pray for things, we don't see the results, and then we give up. God is not slow in answering your prayers as we count slowness. All right? but is patient toward you. God is very patient. You know, I'm not, but I'm not God either, all right? But God is. He is very patient, very patient. Oh, man. <laughs> and here's the reason why he's so patient. Um, he says, uh, he's not wi wishing that any should perish. You know, that's not God's will. He doesn't want to see anybody perish. Nobody. 
It's not his desire for anyone to go to hell. That's not him. But that all should reach repentance. He wants everybody to come to repentance, to go in a different direction, and to receive salvation. That's what he wants. And so, because once he comes, boy, brothers and sisters, the day of grace is gone. There's no more second chances. There's no more grace. There's just judgment. And believe me, it's going to hit the fan. You know, it's going to be judgment like you've never seen before. Now, you think COVID-19 is bad. COVID-19 isn't bad at all. It's a walk in a park. You know, when you see the judgment that God's going to inflict, boy, oh boy, oh boy. You know, but he doesn't want to do that. You know, so he's patient. Not willing that any should perish, but that all would reach repentance. But then Peter says this, he says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done in it will be exposed. Ooh, baby. All right? So patience. All right? Now, St. Paul addresses this subject as well, and he addresses it uh, in many different instances, but I want to share with you uh, his address in Romans chapter 8. And uh, in uh, Romans chapter 8, again, St. Paul is talking about the future glory, you know, when Jesus returns. Yet St. Paul suffered tremendously. Uh, He's probably the greatest evangelist in the Christian faith, yet he suffered just tremendously. But listen to what he says. He says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And some of you are suffering today. Uh, I know some people are suffering from COVID-19. I just got a call from, and I'm going to pray about that in a few minutes, uh, down in Honduras. Uh, there's police officers that have that are suffering from this uh, already. And some other people here in the States and everywhere else are suffering, if not from COVID, from other things, you know. So, but St. Paul says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory to be revealed in us. He says, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly. And we do, we groan, we complain. <laughs> you know, we do, All right? As we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So that's our lesson today as we wait on the Lord, is we need to wait for Him with patience. Okay? So listen to how Dr. Martin Luther is going to unpack that for us this morning as we wait for the Lord with patience. He says this. He says, God sometimes postpones answering prayers. You see, God answers every prayer. Do you realize that? Every prayer God answers. And his answers will be in one of three ways. It'll either be no, yes, or not now. All right? But he answers every prayer. Okay? But so God sometimes postpones answering prayers. He doesn't do this in order to destroy or abandon his people. Instead, he does it to fulfill his promises even more generously. Another paradox. 
Paul tells us that God can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. We put limits on God. And I'm talking about Christians. You know, you can't pull this thing off. And you need my help. <laughs> God goes, really? And we go, yeah, really. <laughs> he goes, no, I don't. I don't need your help. I allow you to help me if I want, but I don't need it. Believe me. <laughs> I'm perfectly capable of handling it myself. All right? So God can do infinitely more than we can even ask. Or imagine. We can't even imagine how much more he can do. Therefore, God wants us to wait patiently during the delay, trusting with certainty that he will give us even more than he has promised. And he always does that. If you look at the Bible and look at his encounters with people and what they asked of him, not only did he deliver what they asked, but he went beyond that in almost every instance. And that's the way he is. Okay? So human nature makes us so over, <laughs> so overconfident and wicked <laughs> that we distrust God's promises and we ignore His threats, and boy, we do. And 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 this is this is Christians. You know, this isn't the people out there that you know are of faith. You know, this is us. All right, because punishment doesn't come right away. We don't take God's warning seriously. We don't. You know, Christians don't. You know, Jesus says, you, you need to be a part of the communion of the saints. You know what we say? No, I don't. I don't need to do that. I can stay home. I can be a lone ranger. Really? Or, or whatever, you know, whatever area. You know, we, we do this. We don't take God's warning seriously. Foolish people hear that sin will bring judgment and punishment, but they just brush it off and say, well, that won't happen for a long time. I wish I had lots of money to count in the meantime. But God wants us to fear his warnings and wait for his promises to be fulfilled. Of course, that can only be done if we have faith. People of the world couldn't care less about God's warnings. They take his warnings about as seriously as a goose hissing at them. <laughs> ah, boy. But God is patient. He postpones both fulfilling his promises and carrying out his threats. That doesn't mean he's lying. God will eventually punish the wicked and shower even greater, richer blessings on the faithful because of the delay. But in the end, he will certainly come. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Unbelievers don't fear God. They don't believe in him. They don't hope in him. They don't even care about God. Believers, on the other hand, pay attention to God's warnings and they trust his promises. That's where real peace is to be found. Trusting in the promises of God because his promises are always kept. God's word for us today, amen. Pray that you'll receive that real peace uh, as you uh, meditate on, on that certainty. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, together, let's pray together. Uh, before we pray the Lord's Prayer, I'm going to pray uh, because uh, of, of uh, many uh, of things that I've had conversation with already this morning. And as I mentioned to you uh, at the start of our time together, uh, I was told uh, I, I have a family in Honduras that minister to uh, the police force and other people as well. And they were ministering to the police uh, yesterday uh, down in Santa Rosa, Copan, Honduras, and they were told that uh, a number of officers have uh, come down with uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, so I'm going to pray for their healing. Uh, and I'm going to pray for uh, all people today. And, and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together, okay? So allow me to please pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day that you've given to us. Another day of your grace and mercy. 
Thank you for the wonderful privilege we've ha we have of coming to you in prayer, knowing that whatsoever we ask, believing we shall receive by asking in accordance with your will. Father, we thank you for the assurance that uh, you tell us that not to be anxious for anything at all, but in everything by prayer and earnest asking to let our requests be made known to you. And then you assure us that the peace of God that passes all understanding to the point that we can't figure it out will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this morning, Father, I want to lift up these police officers down in Santa Rosa, Copan, Honduras, and I ask that you would please reach down, put your healing arms around them and their families and heal them totally and completely, restore their health to them and allow them to return to the routine uh, that they enjoyed before. I pray for all the people in Honduras and all the countries around the world that you would divinely protect them uh, from the virus. But I'm also going to pray, Father, that you would bring incredible repentance to us here in the United States, to our leaders and political uh, people uh, in office with regard to this situation and bring truth out and bring genuine repentance. And then, Father, I pray that you would invoke whatever you deem is appropriate in whatever form you deem is appropriate, whether it's disciplinary or whatever, that this never happens again. But I pray earnestly that repentance will take place at all cost. And I pray that it would start immediately with the United States. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, uh, to, let's pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, together we want to profess the Christian faith again using the words of the Apostles' Creed that makes up our DNA as Christians. So together we profess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Let our cries come to you. In the day of our troubles, we call upon you because you answer us. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all of our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit because your steadfast love is better than life, our lips will praise you. For you have been our help, and in the shadow of your wings we will sing for joy. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truths. Unite our hearts to fear your name. We give thanks to you, O Lord our God, with our whole hearts, and we will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to our prayer. Listen to our pleas for grace. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to pray uh, Dr. Martin Luther's morning prayer. All right? Uh, 
you know, this prayer that, uh, that he prays and that we're going to pray is a very tremendous prayer. Uh, it really is. It's, it's, a, it's a very tremendous prayer, beautiful prayer. Uh, and just so that you know, uh, there's a movie coming out into the theaters uh, this summer called Greyhound, and it stars the actor Tom Hanks. And in, the, and in that movie, Tom Hanks prays Martin Luther's morning prayer. And Tom Hanks is Jewish. Interesting. So together, let's pray this beautiful prayer of Dr. Martin Luther, his morning prayer. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, and our souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, again, a tremendous uh, privilege and opportunity to bring uh, genuine peace to you through peace through the word. And I pray that that has been received by you this morning. So in light of that, go in God's grace and mercies. Continue to serve him today as he gives you those wonderful opportunities. And I leave you with tremendous blue skies and God's blessings to you. Amen.